This is a dot planimeter invented by a few different people in the early 1900s. It's an array of dots that measures the area of a flat shape. You lay this thing over your shape and count up how many dots lie on the inside. This one is centimeter scale, so the number of dots you count equals the area of the shape in square centimeters. Here's a fancier one. It has filled in dots and empty dots, and even some lines. I made these things myself. You can click the links down there and print them out for yourself too. Dot planimeters were invented around the beginning of the 20th century and became pretty popular among certain groups of researchers. Apparently the dot planimeter was regarded as the gold standard among forestry scientists to measure leaf areas. One scientific paper that's often cited as the beginning of this era is Charles Abel's 1939 paper in the Journal of Forestry. But allow me to set the historical record straight in this obscure YouTube video. The dot planimeter was first described in a paper by Hugo Steinhaus in 1924. He didn't actually use dots, but he counted up the intersection points from a grid. Yeah, that's the same idea. Longtime fans of my channel might remember another Steinhaus invention that I talked about, the Steinhaus Longimeter. This is a transparent overlay for measuring the length of a curved line. Hugo Steinhaus actually invented several simple measurement and computing devices, mostly forgotten by now. Actually, while researching for this video, I discovered another one that'll have to wait for another time. Steinhaus's inventions weren't really revolutionary tools. Mostly they did jobs that people already had pretty good tools for. But to my eye, the simplicity and elegance of Steinhaus's tools is special, even when they're not terribly useful in the ordinary sense. But the dot planimeter really was useful, at least according to some people. As far as I can tell, it was never turned into a commercial product because it was so easy to make your own. In the golden age of graph paper, you could get all kinds of grids. You could have them printed on tracing paper or even transparent plastic. And grids could be easily repurposed into dot planimeters by just making dots at the crossings. People wrote scientific papers using dot planimeters throughout the 20th century. I've read several written by American authors who attribute Abel as the inventor. Here's a paper from 1969 by Frolov and Mailing about dot planimeters. We believe that this technique was first used by Abel. Steinhaus did it about a decade earlier. There has never been a proper attempt to investigate the theoretical accuracy of the methods. Actually, Steinhaus proved a nice theorem about the dot planimeter. He showed that the dot planimeter gives the exact area in the limit if you take the average of repeated measurements. Counting is a repetitive and tedious kind of work. This I agree. Let's do it. Okay, here I got a circle. I measured the diameter, did a little pi r squared, and found out that the area of the circle is just about exactly 100 square centimeters. Let's see how we do with the dot planimeter. I count up the dots. I'm going to use this little marker here so I don't confuse myself. And I end up with 99. So according to the dots, the area is 99 square centimeters. That's pretty good. Now when you count the points, your answer will change slightly depending on exactly where the overlay is positioned. So if you really want more accuracy, you got to measure it several times and then take the average. So I repeated this measurement three more times. I got 99 the first time, then I got a 98, and then I got two 100s. Take the average, I get 99.25 square centimeters. The true area is about 100, so that's pretty good. It's really easy to see how it works. These points are in a square grid that are separated by one centimeter each. We can imagine these as being the center points of a grid of squares, and those squares will each have an area of one square centimeter. So if you count them up, we're more or less counting how many squares get overlapped by the shape's area. Now the squares right along the edge, we're going to catch some and miss some, and that will introduce a bit of uncertainty. But on average, we would expect for the various overestimations and underestimations to kind of even out. If you want to make it more accurate, you just make the dot spacing smaller. Here's one with a tenth scale grid, so the number of dots 
divided by 10 will be the area in square centimeters. And that accuracy will improve because more dots means smaller little box areas, and so the amount of overestimations and underestimations will be smaller. If you know some calculus, this should remind you of the basic idea behind the definite integral as a Riemann sum. Over the years, there have been a few simple improvements to the basic design. One guy named Blake added some big grid lines. These group the dots into groups of 25. So as you're counting, you can first count the big groups of 25 and then count up the individual leftover ones. This actually gives you a big improvement in the usability. Another improvement concerns points on the edge of the shape. Somebody's always got to be that guy. What do I do if the dot's right on the edge? Should I count it or not? Well, the most accurate way, I guess, would be to count these as a half, since this would indicate a little piece of area which is more or less half in and half out of the shape. But it's kind of a pain to keep track of these halves while you're counting the dots. So here's another improvement to the basic design. Half of the dots are filled in, and half are empty little circles. It only makes a difference when it's on the edge of the shape, but if it's on the line and it's filled in, you count it, and if it's empty, you don't count it. So this means you'll automatically be counting about half of the ones on the line, which is what you want. There have been other versions made with different point arrangements, like instead of little squares, you could think of little triangles or even little hexagons. These are interesting, but they don't really make it any more accurate or any easier to use. Here's the fanciest one. This is a 10th centimeter scale, and it's got all the bells and whistles. We got the lines there, we got the filled in and the empty dots. Let's try it out. Here the groupings into big squares are 100. The smaller groupings are 25. Those lines really save you a lot of work, but it's still kind of a struggle. I counted up and I got 1,002 dots. Divide by 10, I get an area of 100.2 square centimeters. Now that's quite good. Let's try another. Oh, look, it's pup cake. How you been, buddy? How big is that cute head of yours? Not counting the ears, of course. I mean, come on now. I get 736 dots, which means Pup Cake's head is 73.6 square centimeters in area. Okay. The dot planimeter's obvious historical competitor at the time was the planimeter. There was already a fairly sophisticated mechanical device called the planimeter for measuring areas. I did another video about this one. For some reason, this became my most popular video ever. The mechanical planimeter measures area by rolling around the outer edge of a shape. It takes some skill to use a mechanical planimeter, and you've got to make sure it's properly calibrated. It's a fancy device, and it's not at all obvious why it works. There's something kind of magical and mysterious about it. But the dot planimeter is much simpler. It's just a big grid of evenly spaced dots. There's nothing really mysterious about it. But I see magic and beauty there, too. The idea of the dot planimeter is so simple, you feel like I could have come up with that. But that's mostly an illusion. It only seems obvious because I already showed it to you. Maybe you think you could have come up with that, but you didn't. Just the fact that it took until 1924 for somebody to think of this thing is evidence of the elegance of the idea. And actually, it's still useful today if for some reason you wanted to find the area of some weird shape. I guess you could scan the thing into a computer and measure the pixel area with some kind of graphics program and then convert it to the actual geometric area by some kind of calibration inside your graphic. And don't forget to compensate for optical distortion from the camera. Or you could just count the dots. It's a little tedious and you might have to do it a few times if you want better accuracy, but it's a simple and elegant solution. See, it's not just a stupid grid of points. It's an elegant, stupid grid of points.